is wrong with Sean McVay? Since the Rams were embarrassed in the Super Bowl, that is the question everyone has been asking. After McVay's inaugural season in 2017, when he won Coach of the Year and designed the number one scoring offense, he followed that up in 2018 with the number two scoring offense. The Rams scored three points in the Super Bowl and everything has been downhill from there. This season, they are the 12th scoring offense and Jared Goff has struggled with 19 touchdowns and an ugly 17 interceptions. How are teams preparing against McVay this year and why are things so different from his first two seasons? Despite these offensive woes, they still had a sliver of a chance to slip into the playoffs heading into week 16. In their way stood the 11-3 49ers. In a must-win game, McVay devised a game plan that was surprise to nobody. After the 49ers caught on to what he was doing, he ultimately failed to adjust. If you study Sean McVay's offense, you know the core tenets of his scheme revolve around wide zone runs and the play action bootlegs that work off of that. When a team prepares against the Rams, they have to game plan to stop the play action flood concept because it's a 100% guarantee McVay will call it, often in the very first drive. Every single game, he favors one specific flood concept, which he calls angle. So let's first understand what it is and why he calls it so often. The threat of the Rams wide zone run is the defense's primary worry. Let's begin the play like we're the defense and how they will read what's happening. Each lineman is going to take a step to the left and get the defensive line and linebackers to move east and west, while tight end Tyler Higby will sift block, meaning he will come across the formation opposite the flow of the play. Wide receiver Cooper Cup will take the the same lineman and try to wash him towards the run into the back hip of the right tackle. This looks exactly like the Rams 19 wide zone and makes life extremely difficult for the linebackers to have two assignments. They have to fit their gaps in the run game and, if it's play action, account for the receivers running the opposite direction. McVay's angle concept attacks three levels of defense. If you watched other episodes, it's very similar to the burner concept which is a Shanahan staple. One receiver will run deep to clear out the cornerback and safety. A second receiver will run deep cross 15 to 20 yards. A third receiver will run to the flat and McVay adds a personal wrinkle, which is a slam route where a receiver will begin to block a lineman, then release for a check down. In a standard cover three zone, and in most defenses, there are only two levels of coverage, so defenses have to get creative to cover each receiver. The clear out route will hold the cornerback in safety while the curl flat defender essentially has two jobs, take the crossing route or the flat route. With the flow of the run and the lineman run blocking the opposite way, the defender can't react in time, leaving the flat wide open. What makes McVay's offenses so difficult to defend against are the way he varies formations, personnel, and route assignments. He can scheme this angle concept a million different ways. As long as those three levels of defense are attacked, any combination can work. You can flip the play to the other side with Robert Woods now clearing the coverage and Cup to the flat. You can have Higby run the sail route and have Reynolds come underneath, or Cup run the deep cross and have Higby pivot back outside. The possibilities are really endless, and it's why McVay calls it again and again. In the Rams 49ers first matchup back in week 6, the Rams scored a pathetic 7 points. McVay only ran angle two times, with Goff completing one pass for nine yards. This was back when the 49ers defense was operating at peak capacity. They still had linebackers Quan Alexander and D. Ford, and safety Jaquanski Tart. In Week 16's matchup, where the Rams scored 31 points, the injuries to those three key players played a major role. McVay used Angle 19 times to pick on replacement players, linebackers Dre Greenlaw and Aziz Alshair, and safety Marcel Harris. He even ran it in the first four passing plays of the game. All on the first drive, you can see McVay will change who's running the routes, while the concept remains the same. Higby will run off deep coverage and the other tight end, Johnny Munt, will run the deep cross and wide receiver Josh Reynolds will come through the formation to the flat. The jet motion and wide zone run action to the right will influence any linebackers away from the play, leaving Al Shire out leveraged to the flat for a wide open 20 yard gain. One way to counter McVay's angle concept is to play a four deep zone quarters coverage. This was Bill Belichick's primary coverage in the Super Bowl which worked flawlessly against these flood concept designs. Pre-snap, based off a film study in the Rams formation, this appears to be angled to the left. Reynolds will run the clear out route, Robert Woods the deep crosser, and Higby will go through to the flat. But like we said before, McVay knows how to game plan attack weaknesses in certain coverages and certain defenders, so he targets Harris. So actually, Woods the clear out receiver 
receiver, Igby attacks the intermediate area with a sell route and Reynolds comes all the way across the formation to the flat. When the 49ers are in quarters coverage and have faced similar deep crossing patterns coming across the formation, they counter on season by having the safety on the same side nail down that crosser. This allows the field safety in the cornerback to bracket the clear out route. But because Higby is running a sail route and not crossing the formation, Harris needs to take that route on the same side. You can see at the beginning of the play, the free safety Jimmy Ward starts to come down to cut that crosser. When he realizes it's not there, he turns to the clear out route. Since Harris is used to taking the clear out route with the cornerback to the same side, he doesn't process that his assignment is to now cut Higby's route. Three defenders go with the deep route and Goff hits the sail route for 20 yards. Still in the first drive, the fourth time they run angle, the 49ers made a lightning quick adjustment mid-drive that will prove instrumental for the rest of the game. This end zone view gives a better vantage point for exactly what they did. Their defensive line usually won gaps, which means they attack the inside or the outside shoulder for the offensive lineman to rip through gaps and to get upfield penetration. This creates more disruption from the front four, but pressures the second level defenders by assigning them gaps they have to cover in the run game. The 49ers adjustment was to two gap their defensive line, where a lineman will cover two gaps instead of one. They'll strike in the middle of the chest of the lineman, read the flow of the play, then disengage. They will not try to penetrate gaps. This produces less pressure upfield, but gives linebackers more space and freedom to move. This allowed nickel cornerback Kwan Williams to slow play the run and take that flat route. Though the 49ers had each route covered, Golf made an incredible throw on a second reaction play from the receiver, but the 49ers now have their answer for the rest of the game. Switching back, this is another example of their quarters coverage. This time, Harris, who's on the same side of the crosser, correctly nails down on that route from a safety position. Higby sifts across the flat and is covered by Williams. Brandon Cook's clear out route is covered over the top, and Warner peels back to cover Cooper cup slam route. This play is dead in the water until Golf sees Weatherspoon too far towards the corner and throws a back shoulder ball to Cooks for the touchdown. In the first quarter, they ran angle eight times on those plays. Golf went off for 87 yards, completing all seven passes. The 49ers quickly made adjustments to their defense when facing this concept. After the first quarter, Golf completed just four of eight for 37 yards. By two-gapping the defensive line and freeing up the second level, the 49ers push help to the flats, which defeated the entire play. They constantly tweak their coverage just to keep the Rams on their toes while trying to hide the liabilities like Harris. When they played cover three zone, they had Ward and Greenlaw covering each flat, with middle linebackers or cornerbacks to cover the deep cross and Harris over the top to take care of the clear out route. They knew McVay would continuously alter who was in the game and who was running which route. They knew Angle was coming, so they mixed in an adjustment of their own. On this play, instead of the linebacker or safety carrying the deep cross, cornerback Akello Witherspoon aggressively matches the route. It's a difficult assignment from that leverage and with a trail technique, but Witherspoon does an impressive job keeping up with Reynolds. The 49ers extinguished the Rams' angle concept and handled their offense throughout the second half. Their two gapping defensive linemen ate up blocks, clawed gaps, and allowed the second level to roam free. Whether they ran cover three, cover four, or cover six, the Rams stubbornly refused to stop calling that play. Though Jared Goff threw for 323 yards on the game, he only had 97 in the second half. The Rams had success early on, but with Todd Gurley's lack of burst in his speed cuts and managing only 48 yards on the ground, the linebackers could back off the ball and comfortably drop into coverage. McVay has to diversify his play calls and move away from concepts that the defense has accounted for. That's what coaching is. When one team adjusts, the other has to counter or they self-destruct. McVay annihilated basically the entire league for the first two years. In this game, the 49ers had to quickly make decisions, and that's exactly what they did. McVay, Robert Sala, and Kyle Shanahan engaged in a mental chess match on the field, sliding pieces up and down the board, series to series, play to play. In the end, McVay was put in check. Thanks so much for watching this video. This is Joan Sounds doing the voiceover. Alex will be back next week. It's kind of cool that I can get Jones to say anything, like Mitch Trubisky is better than Patrick Mahomes, or Adam Gaze really knows what he's doing. Shout out to him though. He does incredible work and his link is in the description box below. If you enjoyed this video and you want to help the growth of this channel, the link to Patreon is also in the description box. A lot of the football information in this video is put on that Patreon page with videos, articles, and playbook explanations. You also gain access to the picks against the spread that last week went 5-0 for the first time this season. The Dolphins keep cashing in, which is just weird. So time to get that holiday shopping and even it's a little late, because the Dolphins are making us money. Alright. Be back next week. Until then, see ya.